Hello, this is Miss Moore, and today during chemistry, we're going to discuss types of chemical reactions. Specifically, we're going to talk about synthesis and decomposition reactions. You will need your periodic tables and polyatomic ion handouts handy today. All right, today's essential question. How are the products of synthesis and decomposition reactions determined? We'll start with combination reactions, also known as synthesis reactions. Okay, during synthesis reactions, two or more substances, known as the reactants, combine to form a single substance. Okay, so you start with two or more reactants and you end up with one product, normally. Okay, so A, a plus B produces AB. That's what we call the general formula for a synthesis reaction. And it turns out I can't spell formula. Okay. And then a real world example, we take two potassiums and combine that with chlorine, and that produces two potassium chlorides. Okay. So let's go over the steps to write or complete a combination or synthesis reaction. First thing you do is write a skeleton pro product. So you take all of the atoms, shove them together. Don't worry about balancing or anything, just put the atoms together. Um, an important point, however, and this makes this is a little tricky. If you can make a polyatomic ion, do so. So you're going to try if you have three or more different atoms on the reactant side. Okay, and you always want to use, when you're making a polyatomic, so to make the polyatomic, you want to use one less than the total atoms. Okay, so if you have three different atom types, you're going to try to make a polyatomic out of two of the three. The third one will be used to bond. Okay. Make sure the product is neutral if it's ionic. Common mistake there. You've got to check if, remember, when you make a product, you have to ask yourself the question, ionic or covalent? If the answer is ionic, you need to check the charges and neutralize it. And then the last step is to balance the equation. Whenever you write a reaction, or an equation for a reaction, you balance it, always. All right, so let's try a couple problems. Um, so first, the first synthesis reaction will be sodium plus oxygen. All right, and before we proceed, we need to talk about this subscript here. Um, why does that say O2? Why is there a 2 there? It's because oxygen is diatomic, right? And when a diatomic is written by itself, it has to be O2. Um, I'm making a big point of that because you need the 2 here. That's why it's there. But when you come over for the product, you're not going to bring that 2 with you. You don't bring subscripts with you. Okay, we just have NaO. Now, we, we've just made, we're written a formula, right? So we've got to ask ourselves the question, ionic or covalent? And the answer is ionic because sodium is a metal, oxygen is a nonmetal, which means we need to check the charges. Sodium is a 1 plus, oxygen is a 2 minus. That means our formula is going to be Na2O. And... All that's left is to balance. So we have two atoms only, two types, right? Just sodium and oxygen. And on the reactant side, we have one sodium. Product side, two sodiums. For oxygen, reactant side, two oxygens. Product side, one oxygen. All right, we start balancing from the top, moving down. So we'll put a two in front of the Na. And for the oxygens, we're going to need two oxygens, which unfortunately is going to change our sodiums as well. So we've fixed our oxygens, and by doing that, we messed up our sodiums. So we'll get rid of that two. 
Cross this one out and reevaluate. We have four sodiums on the product side, so we need four on the reactant side. And that is our answer. All right, let's try another problem. Another synthesis, synthesis reaction problem. Um, this one will be a little bit more difficult. We're still starting with our reactants, or just two things, but this time we have two compounds. We have N2O5 and H2O, or water. Now, if you remember back a couple slides, I said during a synthesis reaction, if you have three or more types of atoms, we need to try to form a polyatomic. So, we have, let's see, the types of atoms, we have nitrogens, we have oxygens, and we have hydrogens. Now, you can only make, you want to keep one atom left over. So, which, since we have three atoms here, we can, we're going to make a polyatomic out of only two of the three. Which means we could have a polyatomic made of N's and O's, of... O's and H's, or N's and H's. So what you want to do is look through your, your polyatomic ion chart and find all the atoms that have those letter combinations. So let's see. NH4 is a possibility, right? N's and H's. Um, OH is a possibility. It's made up of O's and H's. Um, NO2 is a possibility, and NO3 possibility, and I think that's it. So the question now is, how do you pick? How do you know which one to use? Well, um, to pick a polyatomic, you want to pick the polyatomic... Pick the polyatomic ion that uses the most atoms without using more than you have. Okay, so what we do, start with the NH4. NH4 has one N, and we have two Ns available, so that would be fine, and four Hs. However, we only have two Hs available, which means NH4 is out. Okay, OH uses one O and one H. We have plenty of both of those, so that's definitely still in the running. NO2 uses one N and two Os. We have two Ns and six Os, so we could use that one. And the same with NO3. So now we've crossed out NH4 as having too many atoms. We have OH, NO2, NO3 left. Which is the best? NO3. It uses the most. Okay. So one of our products, part of our product, we're only going to have one, is NO3. It's a polyatomic. It has a charge of 1 minus. The atom we didn't use was the hydrogen. Still got to use him, though. He's going to be H1+. Now, those charges cancel out, so we're just going to have HNO3. And I'm going to erase this and write that a little bit neater. All right. So let me clean this up a bit, and then we'll try to balance. So we have three atom types here. We have an N and O, and H's. Um, while it's true that NO3 is a polyatomic, we can't write that down as part of, our, part of our list because we don't have an NO3 on the reactant side. All right, so N's on the reactant side, we have two, and we have one on the product side. O's, we have five plus one, Six O's on the reactant side and three on the product side. And H's, reactant side is two and product side is one. Now because we have two different O's on the same side of the equation, we're going to skip the O's. We'll, we'll um, balance those last. 
So, let's do it. Start with the ends. We have two on the reactant side, so if I put a two in front of HNO3, we now, we've changed like everything. We have two H's, we have two N's, and we have six O's. And what do you know? We've done it. Okay, so the difficult part with synthesis reactions is one, making sure if it's an ionic compound to check charges and neutralize. And two, if you have more than two types of atoms on the reactant side, you need to try to find a polyatomic. Okay, let's talk about decomposition reactions. Decomposition reactions are actually, you can think of them almost as the opposite of synthesis or composition reaction. A decomposition reaction, you start with a single compound and it's broken down into two or more products. Okay, so we have a general equation of AB produces, breaks apart into A plus B. Um, now the products can be any combination of elements and compounds. You can end up with some pretty complicated decomposition products. However, for this class, we'll keep it pretty simple. Okay, steps to write or complete a decomposition reaction. So first thing you want to do is write the skeleton equation. Write out the decomposition products. Okay, so you just, just take your, um, your reactant and break it apart. Easy enough. Then, really important, check for diatomic atoms. Diatomic. The guys that can never be alone. Okay, and you're going to run into those a lot with decomposition reactions. Then you just balance the equation. Pretty easy. All right, let's try a practice problem. We've got NaI, or sodium iodide, as our reactant. Decomposition, we're going to break them apart. So we have Na plus I. Okay. Now we look at our products. Um, are either one of those diatomic? Sodium, not. It's not one of our, remember, remember the diatomics, the HN7. So um, sodium is not one of those. However, iodine is. He's written by himself, so put a two there. That's really all there is to a decomposition reaction, except for, of course, balancing it. So sodium's on the reactant side, we have one and one on the product side. Iodine's one on the reactant side and two on the product side. All right, go to balance, top to bottom, sodium's good, iodine not so much. We'll put a two on the reactant side in front of sodium iodide, and we end up with two sodiums and two iodines which means we now need to add a two in front of sodium on the product side, and that's the answer. All right, why don't you try this one on your own, and then come back, hit play, try it. Okay, so we've got P3Cl as a reactant. That's gonna break apart into P and Cl2. Um, oh, why, why Cl2? Because Cl is a diatomic. So we got to have the two there. P, not so much. Okay. Now we're done. Well, no, we're not. We got we got We got to balance. So we've got phosphorus and we've got chlorine. Three phosphorus on the reactant side, one on the product side. One chlorine on the reactant side, two on the product side. We start balancing with the P's. We put a three in front of the P on the react product side. Our CL's, we're gonna have to put a two on the reactant side in front of P three CL. And that gives us, unfortunately, it changed our phosphorus to six and our chlorines to two, which means this three is no longer any good. So we need a six here. And there's our answer. All right, folks, that's it for today.